Rio Arriba County is one of the most scenic and pristine areas of New Mexico, but underneath the beautiful landscapes lurks a much darker vista known as drug addiction. The county continues to lead the country in the percentage of overdose deaths, and it's not just heroin that's the problem. It also includes prescription drugs like painkillers. But now service providers have come together with a bold new plan to turn the tide for good. It's called the Pathways Project, and it's funded on a five-year federal grant worth two and a half million dollars. Correspondent Megan Kermrick teamed up with our partners at the Solutions Journalism Network earlier this year to learn more about where the money would be spent and why not everyone is convinced the approach will work. My brother would tell me, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm getting high before I even put it in my arm. When I was 18 years old, I got shot four times, and I was on pain medication. And once that didn't help no more, I had a friend introduce me to heroin, and then from heroin it went to cocaine, and mixture of all. I started with uh, pain medication. Uh, so it went, went on from there. Uh, when I was about 19, 20 years old, I started experimenting with heroin. And it just went downhill from there. Everything from coke, uh, heroin, meth, uh, pain prescription pills, um, anything that they want you to use. Three years ago, I finally had my first daughter, and I tried quitting, and then I relapsed again. And... I got out of hand, and um, to the point to where I could, I guess, I sort of hit rock bottom, and I was tired of the life I was living. We see it as a soul sickness, a, a hurt, a trauma. In Riariba County, we have generations of addiction. The grandma uses, the, the mom uses, the daughter uses, the granddaughter uses. And this generational battle with addiction in Rio Arriba County also hits families hard. An estimated 60% of all students in the Española schools are being raised by their grandparents, many of whom are battling just to get by themselves. Lupe Salazar's son has struggled with addiction and spent most of his adult life in and out of jail, so she's raising his daughter. <laughs> the reason we have so many grandparents raising their grandchildren is because they either have a child who is using drugs or a child who is in jail because they were using drugs, or a child who is deceased because of their use of drugs. Rio Arriba has been plagued with addiction for decades, but the Pathways program hopes to change that. It starts by bringing all of the providers together, sharing information on resources and services, and streamlining the process for the patients. Just having a discussion. The first part of the strategy is to create a network out of all of our providers. We do have providers and, they, and their services are very high quality, but the problem is they're not connected, which makes it very difficult for anybody trying to access care. Let's say I'm somebody who needs treatment. Uh, well, first I have to go and get a medical clearance and a same-day TB test, but nobody provides same-day TB tests. If somehow I jump that hurdle, then I have to get into eight days of detox, which up until a month or two ago was in Taos. So that lasts eight days. Then a bed has to open up at Oi Recovery or another treatment center um, here in Rio Reba County or somewhere else exactly eight days later. And I have to go get the medical clearance and the same day TB test, which nobody does again. Um, and so that requires a lot of driving back, and I probably don't have a license because I've probably lost it. A lot of driving back and forth between Taos and Rio Riva County to do all of this. And no family can manage that. First is a long-term strategy, and that is connecting all of our providers together through the same health information technology. And basically what that means is enabling our providers to share virtual patient records. Um, and to jointly s provide care to the same client. Everyone says that we need more resources, uh, we need more services, we need more providers. But the reality is, who do we have right now? What services do they provide? What's the capacity? 
and are they being utilized effectively and efficiently? So that's what we wanted to look at. So Pathways is a system that could bring all of that together. And those connections need to start early on to ensure better outcomes, especially for those addicts that detoxed in jail and are susceptible to overdosing once they're released. To address the immediate overdose crisis, Pathways is equipping law enforcement officers with the drug Narcan, which usually counteracts the drug overdose. We do respond to a lot of uh, cases in the Valley here. So now we'll have that opportunity, you know, to have the officers administer that when necessary. I see more more communication. I see more people getting involved. You know, more programs uh, such as this. You know, uh, you know, law enforcement agencies itself getting more educated on on, on it, uh, more particip participation definitely. So from the past to now, I think it's it's awesome. I think it's uh, it's something that we, it's an epidemic. So I think it's all up, to, up to all of us to, you know, step up and do something. But not everyone agrees with the Pathways approach. Inside Out Recovery, how may I help you? Kathy Sutherland Brua is the director of Inside Out Recovery, a peer run wellness center in Española. She says for her team, it comes down to more resources. There are lines and lines of people waiting for treatment. Uh, we've been doing this for nearly eight years. We've been working with heroin addicts, and we serve approximately 175 to 200 people a month, uh, which is a pretty large number for a part-time agency. The methadone clinic is often full. Uh, I know of one person right now who is driving all the way from Taos to Santa Fe every day to dose for, on methadone because there's nowhere else to go. Her agency had to cut back its hours of operation due to a lack of funding. Instead of focusing on electronic records and increased coordination, she wants the money to go towards more direct services and treatment. I kind of liken this to a group of people sitting around in a living room trying to decide what color to paint the living room and the attic is on fire. We had to turn someone away several weeks ago who came in with a bag, who had deliberated for three days whether or not this person felt that they could do this. It was a young man, he showed up with a bag, ready to go to detox, and we made phone call after phone call and could find nowhere to send this young man. Yes, the TB test is a hurdle, but uh, forgive me if I'm being naive, but how is a computer program going to help that be quicker? I think the biggest thing Pathways can do is it could put the inf that sort of information on uh, online immediately if you're if you're involved in it and uh, and and you won't have this sort of uncertainty, this ambivalence of there's no detox, is there detox? There is detox, but how do you get in? How do you navigate the system to get into detox? Okay, and if there isn't detox for them right now, how do you navigate the system to help them to go into an outpatient program that's going to put them on Suboxone? to manage those safely in the community until they could get into a residential. So we can't just throw up our hands and say there is no services for these individuals because that's just not true. Another key component of the Pathways program is being able to track a patient through the process. Participants say it will give them insights into how the programs are working and allow them to connect people to the right kinds of services for their particular situation. That could be medically assisted treatment with Suboxone or Methadone that doesn't get people high but curbs withdrawal symptoms. It could be counseling or trauma therapy or it could be a combination of approaches based on what someone needs. Then the police work to get that person into treatment rather than arresting them. It's very convenient for providers to, to be able to track this way. Our point of view is maybe people don't want to be tracked. We do track, but we track in our own way, not on a computer system that's shared with many, many people. Uh, we track people by their initials, their age, their gender, their ethnicity, the county they're from, and the last four of their social. So it is private. Tracking may not always be as smooth as we'd like it because their consumers may have their own reason not to be tracked. So individuals who don't want to sign a release, we have to respect that. That is their right. That falls under the HIPAA guidelines and we have to respect that and not enter information into the system. Um, that's through this pathway system. Uh, now, I know the methadone programs that are, that are doing this, they're also having this question, like, well, what if our consumers don't want to sign a release? There are some differences there because um, Medicaid is paying for the reimbursement of methadone and they could require certain regulations for that 
payment to be received by the consumer, by the provider. And one of those regulations may be that they be tracked into the system to make sure they don't go and abuse the service somewhere else. To find healing, to, to have a space for individuals, but not just... Lupe Salazar started Barrios Unidos to help families find solutions to addiction in Rio Arriba County. She says healing must also come on a deeper level to help the community deal with the pain and loss that many try to escape by using drugs. We have to work together. If, if we don't work together, we're not going to survive. We are our brother's keeper. Um, we, we can't turn our backs. You know, it's, as much as it hurts and as weary as we get, as tiresome or tedious as it can be, we, we have to work together.